What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is a great day. Today's a great day. Monday, the 13th of November. It's like November's already over. Um, I got this video that I recorded. I didn't think nothing's going to come up of it as I was recording, but you know what? I spoke to Peter a lot and also to you guys during this video about the importance of having the proper steam piping uh, on your steam boiler. And I swear you can't make this stuff up. So here we go. If you need a water feeder for your steam boiler, I don't recommend it, but if you need one, this is how you do it. All right. We have a Burnham. Independence. Wow. This guy was here. This guy was here. And we've been here. We've been here for a while. Burnham Independence SIN4 gas fire steam boiler. Um, right away, if you tell, you can tell the way it's uh, piped in, it's piped in wrong. Um, we're using a single tapping with the top of two inch. Looks like we have a Union, a two inch steam 90, another two inch steam 90 with a nipple in between, going into a three inch uh, steam main right there. Look at that. Wow. Um, and that's it. Uh, what's lacking here is a what we call equalizer right where you come up on the top of the boiler and before picking up that steam main you come across and you reconnect to either the left or right hand side and you create what we call a hartford loop <laughs> and you have equal pressure on the steam uh, main the steam header piping here you don't have it um, but it is what it is it's been installed for x amount of time and if i'm willing to wager i bet you it was this guy right here I bet you there's this guy who put it in, in, let's see if we can kick out the bottom, in, sometime in uh, 2008, 2009. So uh, we've been servicing this boiler for quite some time. Today, at the customer's request, we are adding an automatic water feed to the uh, water supply. Okay. Uh, right now we have a manual valve that allows us to add water to the border manually. He doesn't want to do that anymore. He takes vacations, holidays, whatever. He's not home frequently. And if the boiler needs water, the low water cutoff will, will uh, be active and the boiler won't fire and hence you'll have a cold house, which won't be good in the summer, in the winter time. I was going to add the McDonald Miller WFE 24, but instead I'm going with the hydro level, uh, the VXT 24. This is a 24 volt uh, automatic water feeder and what's great about this is if i could do it one-handedly is that it has a little uh counter digital led counter right there which tells how many gallons of water this thing the system uses or how much it took in um, and you want to monitor how much water is being added to a steam boiler because if you're adding too frequent uh, fresh oxidated water to the boiler cast iron you will cut a hole above the water line and when you cut that hole above the water line, steam, instead of going up to a single pipe or two pipes, if there's two pipe coming out of the top, it'll go up the chimney. It'll take the path of least resistance and it'll go up your chimney and you'll be steaming the atmosphere. And you won't be steaming your house, but you, what, we, what will happen is that your wallet will be steaming out the cash that it's going to burn to burn the gas to go up the chimney. Okay? So hydro level solution is the X... Sorry, the VXT24. Uh, it does a one to five gallon feed and the part number is 45-026. You can get yours at supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service, not a sponsor of the channel. Fill one down. <laughs> Fill one down. All right, we're gonna get rid of this. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna turn off the water to the house. We're gonna take out this gate valve here, missing the handle, and we're gonna put in a half inch IPS ball valve by bluefin okay all right so i removed that valve the nipple and the cap and i got a bucket there trying to catch some of the water we're going to wrap this with some uh ptf8 some teflon tape i'm gonna use the blue monster which peter has right there but i use the blue monster i'm gonna wrap these threads i'm gonna throw on that ball valve all right i got that bluefin half inch ips ball valve on now i can restore water to the service from here uh, we're going to add some piping fittings nipples and add our automatic water feeder throwing in a t right there that way we can still have a manual feed valve but also isolate the automatic feeder in case it fails so we do have special 
male adapters that come with the automatic water feed. This is a half inch sweat by three eighths uh, male adapter. Um, it's probably available in press, but it comes with the sweat out of the box. So we already prepared by cleaning the end of the pipe. We threw some flux on it. We cleaned the inside of the fitting. Peter's gonna use the turbo torch and he is going to solder that together. Peter needs to take the tip of the flame to the fitting. Peter does not have that much experience in soldering, so he forgot the process. The process is the tip of that light blue flame needs to touch the fitting. And then take away the flame and apply the solder. And then you can roll the fitting, hit it with the heat, hit it with the heat, hit it with the heat, hit it with the heat. Hit it with the heat. Thumb. Here is our flame. We have, it's hard to see in the camera, we have a lighter blue. We have a lighter blue right there in the center of the screen. We have that end. We don't want that end to be there. But we want that lighter blue to actually touch the fitting. Right? And that's the hottest part of the flame. Right? Do it like this. Hold on for a second. Right? You want that hot part right there to touch the fitting. But it's also a matter of experience, right? Because you want to keep the heat there for as little as possible. Otherwise, you risk burning out the flux and burning, and then overheating the fitting. So watch what I do here. And when I apply my solder, I'm going to apply it opposite the flame. There's my there's my blue flame right there. And I remove as soon as I see the fitting takes the solder, I'm removing the flame away from it. Now, if I want to take a closer peek, I do have a nice bead all the way around it. It's a little limited right there, so what I could do is I could just send a little more heat there for a split second so it starts to flow, and as soon as it starts to flow, remove the flame. Right, you don't need the flame there anymore. As, as, soon as, as soon as that solder starts to flow, right, pull the flame away. Mm -hmm. Because you don't need any more heat at that point. And as you see start to not flow anymore, bring the flame back a little bit. And it's, a, it's like back and forth like this. Okay. Okay? And it, it, it gets especially hard on much larger fittings, like say an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inch fitting, mm -hmm. where you actually have to go around it. You, have to, you, want, you want the whole fitting to be hot, but it's such a large fitting, you're not going to be able to get it all in one shot. You'll be Damn. doing it like this. But you never want to have the flame... And this at the same time. Obviously, the, the solder is going to melt right away if it's right next to the flame. You want the flame, tr ideally, to be opposite. You want the solder, sorry, to be opposite where the flame is on the fitting. Because you know if it's, if it's, that, if it's hot here, it's even much hotter there. Mm -hmm. And that solder will get pulled into the heat. Okay. Okay. Now, let's cool this off. We have a little crusty bucket. We want to make sure that we cool that off so we can work with it. Okay, now, here is our automatic feeder. Now, we have a, an arrow, sort of a direction of flow. So we're, our water's coming on this side and leaving that side. So do I want to put it here or do I want to put it here? Top. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you can mount it in a vertical position. I, it's always best to use your head, use a brain, install it that way. So we're going to cut a little piece, and we're going to put it onto a male adapter coming out of our ball valve, and that'll go right there. And if you notice, our ball valve will clear, well, it's not going this way, our ball valve is going that way, so it'll be out of the way and clear that. Cool. And then we'll come out of here, and go around, and to connect to our T that I already added. Okay, so we piped in our two male adapters. A nipple, an elbow, another nipple, another elbow, another nipple. We have the T there. I could have cut that out, but I'm leaving that. We're going to press this all together and then wire up. All right. We ran uh, three wires. Um, we ran three conductor. We ran five conductors, sorry. Uh, but we're only using three conductors. We have one, two, and A. One is neutral, two is line, and A is alarm. And I just ran some thermostat wire. Up along here, zip tied it and went to here. And inside, I have 
my feed, which is that A, neutral, which is that one, and yellow, the two is hot. Right now we're on two. Let's reset that to read zero. So now we have zero gallons a minute. We're not done yet now. Though. We have step four and step five to consider. Step four is setting the feed delay. And basically what that means is how long the system is going to wait when the low water cutoff is active before it starts to, to fill. I like two minutes, which is factory setting. The feed amount, which is step five, low water cutoff, the factory setting. So it will fill based on signal from the low water cutoff. Um, right now we're going to have that last dip switch, um, you know, I guess pushed in. And there the second from the bottom is going to be pushed. In. So behind that cover... We have our delay, and that's that second one is pushed in. And over there, the bottom one is pushed in. See, the little thing is a little pushed in. It's not so white like the other one is. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So now we're at zero. We're going to open up this valve, and we're going to test the low water cutoff and the automatic feeder by draining some water from the bowl. So we've got a poor draining valve right there. We want to tap on that with something hard like my head or the pipe. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, so that's taking a sweet ass time. Slow and steady wins the race. Uh, we're also missing a, wow, drip light. It's a one-eyed monster, Peter, pointing right at your eye. The one-eyed monster. Uh, while working on a draining of the boiler, let's talk about what the system lacks. It lacks a equalizer and basically what that equalizer is it's in a it's a it's the end of the steam main coming here and the purpose of the equalizer is to equal the pressure the steam outlet pressure versus the condensate return pressure right um and also you you're missing also a wet return here a, sorry not a wet return a hartford loop now when you have all this in place, the system works well, right? But the dead men, you know, who put this back, put this together, you know, 100, 100 years ago, 100 and 200 years ago. No, I'm just joking. Like 80 years ago when this house was built, they didn't always use the piping arrangement with, you know, an equalizer and the Hartford loop. They didn't always do that. You know what they did? I won't let you. I won't, I won't put you under pressure. But, you know, not only did they do this all by hand, but they didn't always do it that way, right? Uh, when they piped it without the, uh, the part for loop or the, e or the equalizer, the slightest amount of steam pressure would push water out of the boiler and into the return. And they solved this problem by adding a check valve. <laughs> Right until one day when the Hartford Insurance, the Hartford, sorry, the Hartford Steam Boiler Insurance Company, who, who got tired of paying out claims for, listen, if this wet return develops a crack, the boiler's going to drain. Right, mm -hmm. right now that yellow light is active. That yellow light is active. So right now, if this if this wet return should fail, right, mm -hmm. the boiler's going to drain in its entirety. Right? And back then, they didn't have fancy things called low water cutoffs or other things like that. You know, we had boiler attendants. And it was usually the wife of the house who maintained, you know, the adding of coal into the boiler. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff went back on in the 19, uh, early 1990s. Sorry, the early 1990s. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff went back on in the 1990s. A lot, yeah. We had Bill Clinton getting, uh, had, had, had favors from Monica Lewinsky under the Oval, Oval Office table. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, in the early 1900s and the late 1800s, right? You had you know, the wives were the attendants of the uh, of the boilers, um, but they would add a check valve to solve that problem of the Hartford loop and the equalizer, um, which was uh, piped off the wet return. It's crazy, but before long, you know, they would realize that the check valve would fill with sediment, and uh, it would get stuck open, <laughs> and that caused the water to carry back out of the boiler again. And you wash, rinse, and repeat this. So they developed the equalizer pipe, right? Which went from, from here, right? It went across, right? This wasn't an elbow. This was a T. And it went across, and it connected to that pipe right there. And, um, and they replaced that. They replaced the check valve with the equalizer pipe. So whenever pressure appears inside the boiler, will also now appear inside the equalizer pipe. And if you, saw, and if you size these pipes correctly... Right, uh, the two forces, right, because you have a force here and a force there, will balance each other out. That's why you'll never see, well, you should never see this two-inch pipe, this equalizer pipe, be more than one pipe diameter smaller. Right, we'll sometimes, you know, we always use two-inch to connect to there, right, the top of a hard loop, but you'll see sometimes they'll use inch and a half 
pipe to go from here to there, right? But if you use inch and a quarter or smaller, it's no good because now this, the steam pressure will overcome the force of the return pressure on the, on the condensate return. Make sense? There's reasons why we do everything, and that's because the dead men, you know, kind of perfected it for us, and now we're just carrying along the legacy. Make sense? Makes sense. All right, our light is on, right? We should be, and we're down to the bottom there on our side glass. I always stop, I always stop draining right there. We're going to wait those two minutes for the automatic feeder to kick on. All right, so we just gave it a call for heat roughly 40 seconds ago. We're waiting that two-minute duration of time before the automatic water feeder activates. And we'll see what happens. Uncut, unedited raw. There's our hot, our feed, and our neutral. All right, we're over two minutes into it, and she's still not feeding. Let's see what I did wrong. Reversed. I don't think polarity makes a difference. Reversed, neutral, and hot. And we have a yellow amber light for a low water condition. That feeds that way. Let's wait and see now. Two minute delay. Stop, reset, start again. All right, so not exactly two minutes, but close enough. We started in a little way. We did. Very nice. So actually the polarity makes a difference here, which I didn't think it would. Neutral and hot, um, huge difference. So don't reverse your neutral and hot, uh, otherwise it won't work. You know, uncut, unedited, raw, and uh, you'll thank me now, and you'll smash that thumbs up button, and you'll hit that subscribe button, okay? Do it now, thank you very much. All right, 325 into it. We still have one gallon of water. We have water there. And Houston, we have ignition.